What is soil? That may seem like a really simple question, but in fact, you're taking an entire course on the science of what is soil. So it is a little bit more complicated to explain than you might at first think. To begin with, we might think that soil is simply dirt, the stuff that you get on your hands or under your fingernails or all over your clothes if you're playing outside. But in fact, we do as soil scientists consider there to be a difference between soil and dirt. Soil is intact, in situ. It is in the place where it formed and where it functions almost as a living organism. It's certainly its own ecosystem with a completely intact set of processes, microorganisms that live in it, plants that live in it. So when it's intact and in its normal location, we consider it to be soil. Like the picture here that shows a profile, which is what we call it when you dig down into the soil and you can see the layers, which are called horizons. We'll learn more about horizons later. The picture on the other side where you see hands with dirt on them, that is what we call dirt. It's no longer in its normal spot. It's been removed from its source. And properties at this point can be quite difficult to ascertain. And certainly the processes such as what microorganisms are doing in the soil and that sort of thing are no longer viable. So we consider dirt to be the stuff that has been removed and is elsewhere and soil to be what's on the earth, on the ground, under your feet. And so now that we know what soil is, it's important for us to understand where soil can, has come from. And we're going to spend quite a bit of time on various portions of these during the course, um, some of them this week. But just to give you a summary, the most important things that go into soil formation are these five things. Climate, which results in two different kinds of weathering which is what breaks down rock to begin the soil formation process. And there are two kinds of weathering, physical and chemical. We'll spend time on those later. Parent material, which is the rocks or the geology under on the earth, which is what the weathering is breaking down to create the soil. Topography or relief, in other words, how the land itself, the landforms are shaped. Are they steep? Is it a valley? Is it a flatland? Is it a wetland? That sort of thing. All of those things make a difference when you're talking about the effects of climate on the rock itself. Biota or living things such as plants, animals, microorganisms, all of those things that um, also impact the rocks themselves and interact with the topography to determine how rocks break down to create soil. And lastly, time. Time is a very important process. Um, well, not so much a process as a factor in soils formation. It takes a very long time for a rock to turn into breakdown and turn into soil. So I want to spend a few minutes talking about one of these in particular because it is a very important part of what we learn about how soils function as we go on in this course, and that is parent material. So the parent material, as I said, was is the rocks or the geology under the Earth's surface that are the things that are being acted upon to break down to form soil. And here you can see three very different kinds of rocks. For those of you that might know a little something about geology or have already taken geology, you might recognize these as being three different kinds of rocks. The one on the top left is a granite rock. It's a piece of granite which is an igneous rock. The one on the right is, that's a little bit green is a piece of serpentine or serpentinite, which is a metamorphic rock. And the one at the bottom is limestone, which is a sedimentary rock. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the, the different ways that rocks form, or you, and you haven't taken geology or learned any of this in a very long time, spend a little bit of time doing some looking up of those terms in your readings and resources or in our library to help refresh yourself because each of these types of rocks has completely different properties. Um, they, can, they differ in terms of their hardness, in terms of their mineral content, and as you might imagine, if you think back to what I said in terms of how soils are formed, the soils that come from these types of rocks vary dramatically in terms of their texture and their chemistry. 
For example, the rock on the right that has the greenish cast, the serpentine rock, has a very odd grouping of chemicals in them that when it weathers and creates soil, only certain types of plants can actually live on it because it creates almost a toxic environment for most plants. And the plants that have evolved to live on them are very specific. That type of soil can be identified very quickly because of its differences. Whereas a soil that might form from that limestone is going to be quite sandy and soft and is going to support a completely different type of vegetation. So the soils that result, as well as the time, can also make a big difference. So the soils that result from these different types of rocks can be very different indeed. So it's important to understand the influences of parent, and, of parent material. Lastly, because of those differences, we start to think about, and we're going to spend a lot of time in this course thinking about the various properties of soil. And we can classify those into the physical properties, chemical properties, and even biological properties when you start to think about the microorganisms and processes that are happening inside of soils. And we'll talk a lot about how you classify all of those and how we measure them as we go forward. So to recap, soil is different from dirt. We've learned about how soils form, how important parent material is, and the kinds of properties that we might describe and classify when we're learning about soils. A PDF of this can be found in your lessons, and please be sure to see your readings and resources to help flesh some of these topics out for you as we go through this week.